Hey guys, welcome back to Henry Stanhill Tutoring, and today a quick video on HPing3. This is an open source application you can use to generate traffic on various ports and protocols. You can use it to create TCP, UDP, or ICMP packets, and also even raw IP packets too. One of the features that we'll be looking at is the traceroute option with, with HPing3. So let's have a look at a practical example here. Let's say we had a remote site that we tried to trace route to as we're troubleshooting an issue. And we notice that along the way, our traffic gets dropped. By default, in Linux, your trace route is going to be using UDP. If we specify hyphen I for ICMP, we'll see, unfortunately, in this case, a similar result. What happens instead if we utilize HPing to send a TCP SYN packet with the trace route option enabled to port 443, and we say that we want to do this fast, which means not one packet per second, but more. And we put in the same host. Now we have a different type of an output that we've seen, that we saw before. Instead of it stops, though, at hop number 9, it ceased. If we press Control z it will skip that hop and continue on. And we can see a bit more data than we saw before. So, this lets us analyze and in some cases, get more details about the path to a remote service. So we can see in this case, previously, we didn't get anything back on hop 10 for either of our tests, but this time we did. And we can maybe use that to better help diagnose a problem that we could have reaching a remote host. So what if we wanted to gain some more information than we got from that? Let's say we wanted to actually um, test each hop more thoroughly. We can add an additional argument here, which is tr keep ttl. This will force HPing to only increment the ttl value when we tell it to do so with control z. So we'll hit enter there and we'll see it's stuck on hop 1, then hop 2, and hop 3. And at each time I'm pressing Control Z, it's incrementing the hop, or sorry, the TTL value, and so the hop increments as a result. And this is just uh, going to let us see individual hops and what's actually happening uh, in a more detailed manner because we'll see more packets returned per hop, basically, or more ICMP time exceed messages coming back from each of the routers along the way. So in this case, we can see there's uh, something else which we may or may not have observed before. We can see multiple IPs in some cases coming back for various hops. And this is probably indicating to us a equal cost multipath routing situation at that particular hop. So that's a normal thing to see if you do notice that. And if we keep going, we'll see we have hop 10 responding to us now. And hop 10 actually returns a lot of different IPs. So there could be something else happening there, but it also seems to be having some issues. Uh, sometimes we can see the response times are quite high, and it seems to be a bit choppy, so there's traffic that's dropping. Let's continue on here. We'll get to the end, and we'll, there we are. We've reached the end system now. We can, can hit Control c and break out of that. So what would happen if we wanted to maybe gain more information about that one particular hop? As you can see at the bottom here, we have a summary, but it's summarizing all the packets for our session we just did now, so including every single hop and the end system. If we go back and we specify dash dash TTL, and then we specify hop number 10, or TTL value of 10, then we're just going to see traffic return from that one hop. In this case, we can see the same behavior as before, where there's a variety of response times as well as a variety of IPs. And if we let this go for a while, we can then press Control c to break it, and we can see just how you know bad this hop was. We see there's a 35% packet loss. The average response time is rather high at 20, 263 milliseconds. And... Uh, you know, we can also observe there's a large number of hosts that are returning data to us here. So this could indicate a problem, or it could be totally fine. 
it's hard to say without more context. But if you're troubleshooting a network that you control, or if you're n noticing that after this hop and every hop beyond, you see similar behavior, this would be a good indication that something bad is happening here at this location, and you might want to investigate further with whoever owns this actual network resource and inform them, hey, I'm having troubles reaching your site, and, uh, you know, please see if you can help me out. Now, usually, that's something done at the ISP level. So, as a user, you would you'd speak to your service provider and say, hey, I'm having troubles reaching this resource. Can you reach out to so-and-so and maybe provide them with some of this information? And some of their guys in their engineering group can go and speak with a remote network carrier and say, hey, this, this, this is happening, and, you know, can you guys investigate and see what's going on? And that's usually how these sorts of things get resolved. Otherwise, uh, as a user, this is just more of this is more or less as useful information to you to help figure out what's going on and maybe why a remote service isn't performing as you'd expect. So, one other thing we can do here is I've written a little script that I'd like to show you quickly here called process.sh. And this can be used if you want to uh, analyze some of those hops and sort of um, like uh, uh, summarize the information that was seen. You can use this to get information such as the standard deviation between the ping responses, the minimum, maximum, and the average response times of each hop, as well as the variance between the minimum and, and maximum values. It's a fairly simple little thing. It's just utilizing a for loop and uh, arc basically to do all the actual math and calculate these things out. So if we go up here to our previous trace and we grab all this data and we scroll on through, there's a lot of it, and we take the information we've got here, copy it, add it to a test file. We'll do test file 2 in this case and paste it in. Then we can run the script against test file 2, and we can see our results. And this breaks things down for us so we can see the different values of, uh, well, the IP addresses observed at different hops, the number of packets observed at each of those hops, the standard deviation, average, minimum, maximum, ping time values, and the variance between the minimum and the, minimum and the maximum. So if you're troubleshooting something, you could come through this list and this output and see, well, hey, things start to get a bit strange around this hop, for instance. So maybe I'd want to start my investigations there and focus in on testing at that location and beyond. So this is a way you can use HPing 3 to troubleshoot and gain more insight into what's going on between your system and a remote host out there be it as an individual working for a carrier or just someone at home that's curious about what's going on. So I hope this information is useful to you. If so, please be sure to like and subscribe and look out for more content. Click that bell so you get notified when I make more videos. And if you have any questions or comments about what you've seen here today, please feel free to leave them below and I'll be happy to respond. All the best and I'll catch you guys next time.